Wake that ass up. LA's number one hip hop morning show is Nick Cannon Mornings on Power 106. Nick Cannon Radio, yes, community conversations, meaningful conversations that really uh, inform us, uplift us, enlighten us. And today we have someone from the community, one of the leaders in the community, uh, the chair of public safety in our community, assembly member Reggie Jones Sawyer. How you doing, sir? How you doing? I'm doing. Uh, I'm doing good. As I said to you earlier, feels like the twilight zone out there right now. In, uh, indeed. I mean, it, it's so much going on. I always, I like to say uh, 2020 is a year of reset and ascension. And to enable to do that, you have to kind of do away with a, a lot of the old negative energy. So hopefully we are now heading towards uh, things of, of, of positive approaches and higher frequencies. Uh, to say all of that, we do have to talk about things that are currently going on in our community that you've been dealing with uh, for quite some time when it comes to everything from social justice, race relations, uh, public safety, what would be your ultimate message to, to our community? Uh, that we're in a seminal moment. And what this is what I tell young people who feel like, you know, everything's out of control and they have, they don't, there's not something they can do. Um, I, I tell them that 2020, when you're sitting around with your great, great grandchildren mm-hmm. and ask you, what did you do in 2020? You want to be able to say, I marched. I protested. I helped to get legislation through. I changed the way policing is done in this country. That your life is so much better from what happened in 2020. You don't want to go, well, I was quarantined and I didn't do anything. You want to get active. You want to get involved. And I say that to to older folk who may be discouraged because things don't seem to to change. Well, they've changed significantly. You just got to open your eyes and then look toward the future. Uh, What would... You know, Martin Luther King, if he had just said, I'm 28 years old, doesn't seem like anything's going to happen. I'm not going to get involved in this bus boycott. Right. He did. He definitely and look, did. And 12 years later, he changed the world. Think about what I said. In 12 years, this young black man changed the world. That's what all of us can do right now. Such a positive message and a powerful one at that. And you have a, a family legacy when it comes to actually the civil rights movement. Uh you gotta you my gotta uncle. break it down for me, but your your uncle was uh, a a part of the movement in 1957, correct? Right. My uncle was a group of nine kids, 15 to 17 years old, that integrated Little Rock Central High, uh, in in Little Rock, Arkansas, which was the best high school in the country, and the National Guard and the 101st Airborne had to go down there and protect them. These young kids were kicked, beaten, spit on. Uh, and unfortunately, as my uncle used to say, I thought the N word was my middle name. Mm. Every day he went through things, abuses that adults think about this. Adults couldn't go through. Think right. about if you had the pressure that you could be killed, beaten or maimed every day you went to high school. That also let me know that stopping African-Americans or any disadvantaged group or this Latino immigrant from going to school. It let me know that the the solution to all of our problems in disadvantaged communities starts with education. Uh, I'll just give you one other story. When I got elected in 2012, every private prison in California came to me and said they needed 10,000 more prison beds over the next 10 years. I'm not a math major, so I said, what algorithm did you know you get? My kids are math majors. I don't know what algorithm is, but, you know, I went with (laughs) And he said, by the number of third graders that can't read at third grade level, we can predict 100 percent how many will end up in prison. The school to so prison pipeline. LA, yep. Being a being a brother from South L.A., I said, why don't we just educate them all so we can figure out how many more colleges, university, trade schools we need to build over mm. the next 10 years. Wow. Those private prison people have not come back to my office since 2012. I bet so not. That, that's that's big business for them. <laughs> but we truly appreciate that we have someone like uh, Assembly Member Reggie Jones Sawyer in the position uh, to actually make those statements and have those discussions and shift that paradigm when it comes to our, our community. Because as we know, you know, Nelson Mandela said it the best that education is the greatest weapon if we want to change the world. So speaking of in this changing world times, we still got to be. Uh, concerned about not only our public safety but our public health as well and still in the midst of a pandemic with all of this going on together 
what are the things that you know are the most important to you coming across your desk when dealing with our safety and our health? Uh, I'm really concerned about uh, the coronavirus. Um, if you've looked at the data, African American, Latinos, all of us have underlying conditions, health problems. Uh, that is the prime cause of why a lot of people die, and right. it's hit our communities like like a hurricane. Right. Um, and so we don't have a lot of good health care in our communities. In my district, for example, in a 59th Assembly District, which is South LA, Huntington Park, Walnut Park, and uh, Florence Firestone area, we have no hospitals. Right. Think about what I'm saying. I represent half a million people, and we have no hospitals. Wow. In our district, we have clinics. But they're not always fully emergency funded. care clinics, but those aren't hospitals. Those aren't hospitals. And so I'm trying to get more money there because those are our first line defenders. They're the ones that treat diabetes, high blood pressure and, and uh, heart problems. If we can move them out of hospitals there to free. Let me say that again to my free clinics in my district, which is one of the poorest in the state. Not only will we take care of a lot of health problems, we'll be able to maybe fight back on the coronavirus better than anybody else. But since we don't have that, uh, it's, it's really problematic. So that's why we've been pumping as much money as we can with not only, I said on budget, not only from a budget standpoint, but also getting legislation to, for example, telemedicine. Uh, we never use telemedicine. Think about what we're doing now. Right. You're probably used to being in-person um, interviews. Yes. Now we're doing this. You can, this do, is you like, can do checkups this is virtually. Yes. You can have a doctor t tell you what to do over, over the phone. They've, my clinics have said their patient interaction has gone up almost 1,000% since we have this medium, wow. which means that more African-Americans, Latinos are getting access to medical care now than ever before. So we need to expand that and we need to make it free. Right. We need to, to do that. Uh, and I just leave you with it from a personal standpoint. I'm diabetic. Mm. I lost 40 pounds because I have medical insurance. I can talk to my doctor. We put me on a diet. We he put me on a plan. I am now off of insulin, working wow. my way to being off of metformin. But I have those advantages. What right. would it be like if we get all of that care to our community? How many people would be off of metformin, off of, and insulin is not cheap, At off all. of insulin? off of all of those um, high blood pressure, be able to get their high blood pressure before they get high blood pressure. Right. And, we, and we can get those medicines down. Our community health-wise would be extraordinarily better off than they are right now. Wow, that that is definitely a, a positive way to look at it. We, we, we've discussed health and wellness for our community. We discuss uh, the criminal justice system. We discuss prison reform. Ultimately, uh, in in our or your district or in our community, economic stimulus for Los Angeles. Uh, I know that's one of the, the policy and legislation uh, issues that you're actually talking about. How, how do we approach this? Because, I mean, obviously we heard the big conversation about, you know, everybody getting twelve hundred dollars during the time of uh, the, the quarantine. But then now as we stand, as we're trying to rebuild and get things back to the new norm, um, people having jobs and having the finances to to move forward. How are we dealing with that as a community? So right now I have a uh, an economic stimulus plan for South Los Angeles. And not to leave anybody out, but I need to come up with a plan that actually fits um, poor, brown, African-American, Latino dist district. Um, my district is like 95% people of color. And our our issues are much more unique. And so I need to address what we talked about earlier, the education, including special education. Um, I have more um, public schools and I have the second most charter schools in the state, in my district. Mm. And I also have a lot of special needs kids. Um, and I know what special needs can do when you take care of that. My, my brother was born blind. And because we were able to get him all the ADA and special needs, my brother's now doctor. Frederick Jones. Wow. He works in DC school system. He's an assistant principal. And when kids come in there and whine about their, you know, how their state of life is, my mother's on drugs, my father. And my brother said, I will gladly change places with you. I'm blind. Wow. You have no excuses for not succeeding. 
Wow. And he turns these kids around. So that's one special needs kid that that got the education he need. We mainstreamed him into the into the public school system so that he could maintain himself. We need to do more of that. Um, we need to upgrade our health care, which I talked about earlier. Um, economic development, small businesses, about 40 percent of small businesses will fail after this epidemic. In my district, probably 60 percent of the small businesses. Wow. Uh, I went to USC. I'm proud that they probably did the largest single employer, but that pales in comparison to number of small businesses that employ people in my district. And so I want to make sure they get access to capital like big companies do. We get local funding and funds, but most important, we get money to our community services. And when I say that, nonprofits, don't give the money to government. Let's get that money to the, to the first line workers who, who do the best work to make sure our kids stay out of prison, stay in school, um, and ultimately be able to get a sustainable job. And then I'll just leave you the last thing that I really am concerned about. It's called gentrification. Mm. Um, if you probably know whether it's uh, South Los Angeles and Lamert Park and, and other places, people are move, moving in and buying up the land. Indeed. In my district, only 70% of the people own, 70% 70, 70 of the land in South LA uh, are, the, are, are people are renters. The wow. rest, the 70% of that land is owned by people outside my district. Wow which just makes it prime for gentrification. What I want to do is talk to the people that own homes, the Latino African American folk, tell them, give it to your kids, have them become joint owners on it so that after have them cherry out that house, put in whatever you want and have makes the most beautiful house on the block, get a loan for a hundred thousand dollars within 10 years, you'll have a million dollar home. Now you have wealth, right? Now you are wealthy. Right. You understand what I said? And you put in your time. So a young person like yourself, Nick, right. you put in 10 years with your family. Now the school is gentrified, but now you are part of that. Such don't a take powerful that, message. Don't take that $300,000 right now. Right. Nah, such a powerful message. I, we actually have a movie that uh, uh, I directed and starred in about uh, gentrification in Los Angeles and Inglewood specifically uh -huh. because we know uh, the – the the stadium and all of the 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 complex that's being built there and that film was you know it's been in a bunch of film festivals and coming out soon so we dealt with that in the community in in a real way and we see it happening daily so I'm glad you you you're teaching and educating on that yeah it's it's really it's really really important right now uh, because people are coming in and buying up our neighborhood uh, and I probably and I will be introducing um, like three bills personally. One that moves money out of the criminal justice system. And I'm not talking about, I don't get caught up in the way you defund law enforcement, but we need to be able to better spend our money so that it goes into youth programs, community service, health programs, education programs to support them. Because I think once you get kids into better programs, then it helps law enforcement. Right. It reduces the number of people who want to be criminals. It reduces the number of victims of crime. And that, and then it creates a better, a better uh, group. Do you know, we spend, if you go to juvenile, um, the uh, juvenile justice system here in California, in the state, we spend like $300,000 per year per student to keep them incarcerated. Wow. I could send, Nick, I could send you to USC, Harvard or Yale, get you a condo. You can eat steak every day and I can buy you a brand new car for that. Wow. And in, and in four years, you would be off of it and be a productive member of society. $300,000 to keep a kid incarcerated a year. Yes. We can do a whole lot better. Man, yeah, we got to shift that. As a, as, a shift as a community, we definitely got to gotta fix that issue. And we appreciate you, Assembly Member Reggie Jones-Sawyer, uh, for being the, the chair of public safety, but really to touch on these topics and to educate our community. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. And thank you for having me on. This is important. This is our time, brother. Super, super important. It's definitely our time. And this has been a community conversation. Uh, we're growing and we're not just going through it, we're growing through it, making it happen right here on Nick Cannon Radio. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome.